Hi, I'm Alex from NME, and today we're joined by the director of the new Conjuring film, Michael Sharves. How long have you been waiting to get your mitts on Ed and Lorraine Warren? You know, I actually found out about it during when we were finishing up The Curse of La Llorona. And, um, you know, it was uh, it was during that that, you know, I really, you know, struck up, you know, I, I was, of course, you know, working with James. He was the uh, the producer on that film. And we just kind of struck up a friendship. And we started talking, you know, more about it. And. And, uh, you know, I'm a huge Conjuring fan. I mean, I, you know, the, you know, the first and second films are, you know, really, you know, you know, amazing movies. And um, James, you know, started kind of teasing the idea and kind of teasing the idea of, um, of taking the, the franchise in a new direction. Um, and, um, and so, you know, once I, you know, honestly, when it first started coming around, I, I just thought it was like, it was too good to be true. I mean, like that just felt like a pipe dream. And, and so I think I just kind of, you know, entertained it as like, Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, and I was reading the script and I don't know the more I still to, to be honest, like long story short, I still can't believe I directed a Conjuring movie. You also managed to get John Noble, who lots of people will know as Dana Thor from Lord of the Rings um, in on the action. Can you tell me a bit about the process of casting him? Cause he's brilliant in this. Yeah, John is amazing. And we actually uh, we went back and we shot more of John because everybody loved him so much. I mean, it was kind of designed as a more specific, smaller role. And I think that we all really loved him and really responded to him. And I think it, he he brought a flavor to The Conjuring that we've never seen before, you know, and it's, you know, I think every role, I mean, I also loved him in Fringe. I thought he did such a great job in that. And, you know, he just has this incredible presence and uh, we really lucked out in having him. Did you think about maybe putting an end credit scene into the end credits, just because that seems to be part of the course in these kind of expanded universe films at the moment? Yeah. You know, we actually, we had one and, um, I don't know. I'll keep it a mystery as to what it was. Um, oh. because, you know, it may, uh, it may kind of, you know, be coming uh, back and, you know, in another form, but um, it was, uh, I, I think that there was something that we were really proud with the, the ending and just, you know, the kind of, um, you know, it, it felt like a real kind of finite, uh, you know, close to the story. And, you know, not to say that there aren't, you know, a, isn't a door open for many more, you know, worn cases and worn adventures, but there was something about this that just felt like ending a trilogy just felt, you know, nice and solid with uh, with this ending. So did the, the scene you had in there tease maybe a fourth and a fifth film, maybe? Actually teased the eighth. We just we're going to skip to that and then backtrack. It was very complicated. That was part of the reason we took it out. It was just people didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it, what it teased was there, there's, uh, you know, some, you know, definitely some villains and some ideas that we introduce in this. And um, it was an expansion on that. It was, you know, kind of, a, you know, basically giving a glimpse on how we would unspool that. And um, I'm glad that we didn't put it in because it does seem like sometimes I don't know. I, you know, you know, sometimes it always feels like you're, you know, you're being kind of roped into the next one. And um, even though I do love that as a movie fan, there was something nice about the just the you know, kind of ending without it. There's so many great villains from The Conjuring first now that it almost feels like we're building up to kind of maybe an Avengers style film where they all kind of get involved. Is that something you think you can see happening? <laughs> without a doubt, honestly, like I think that there is, you know, I think The Conjuring is known for its, its villains, its iconic villains. Um, I think it does a really great job of, um, you know, of handling that. It, it is interesting, you know, yeah, I think that there definitely could be, a, you know, more of a, you know, a crossover as uh, as it gets going. I'd love to see that. Well, thank you so much for speaking to me today and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. It's been a pleasure.